welcome to this week's mellow vlog. Today's Tuesday. I actually did record a bit yesterday, Monday, but I didn't like how it turned out. So I am redoing it and doing a recap of yesterday because that is editing magic. So we came back from Tahoe Sunday evening and then it was really nice to just relax, get out of the city, breathe in the really cold, refreshing air, and of course spend time with my sister, Chris and Archie. During 2020 and 2021, I didn't really see them that much. Even before that, we didn't see each other super often, but I feel like at the end of 2021 and 2022, we started to like see each other more often and I've been really appreciative of the time we get to spend together. So it was nice to do a little trip before Brian and I leave. And I think that vlog is gonna turn out super fun. So I'm excited to edit it. Then yesterday was Monday. Okay, so Monday I usually do grocery shopping. I always go to Trader Joe's. If you follow my Instagram, you know that I love shopping at Trader Joe's and trying out all the new seasonal stuff. Maybe not all of it. I still pick what I think I will like at least. So follow me on Instagram and I have highlights of all of the food I have reviewed from Trader Joe's. Anyways, uh, so I was gonna go do grocery shopping. I usually do it early in the morning just to avoid the crowd. But then my car wouldn't start. It like wouldn't even sputter. And then eventually I tried enough times that it started sputtering but could never start or I got too scared to like push it more. And so I called Brian. Luckily we were just like, I was parked in front of the house and, and somehow he was able to start the car. It did sputter a little bit when he was trying to start it but at least he got it to start. And so he went along with me to Trader Joe's, dropped me off drove the car around in the parking lot for a while and we just hoped that the battery would last. Yesterday when we checked, the battery did turn on again later that day when he moved my car. And yeah, it seemed okay. So hopefully it was just because it was sitting there for like a week. Anyways, that was not a great start to the Monday except the fact that it did start again. So I guess that was good luck. And then I had found this like $10 bill in this puddle. <laughs> there was like a puddle like next to a curb and there's a $10 bill just sitting in there. And so I was like, you know what? This morning was stressful. So I'm just gonna pick up. I don't see anybody looking for $10 bill anywhere. So it's, I'm gonna claim it as mine. And it was like dripping with water hopefully just water <laughs> who knows what else what else both of my prescription glasses came in the mail so my prescription glasses came i mentioned that i ordered two one was warby parker this other one is iconic it's just through the health insurance and i got blue light filters for both of them and they are significantly different so I'll start with the Warby Parker one because, I don't know, it's, I like this pair the most. I like the case, it's like flat on the bottom. The side of the case says, nice to see you. I don't know if it's in focus. And the frames that I got are called Duncan and it's a really pretty tortoise thin rim frame. And so yeah, I got blue light filters on these, but I can't tell, like, from my very quick research online, blue light filters, they can either be painted on top of the lens or they can be like embedded in the lens. I'm pretty sure this one is just painted on and apparently from one review I read online, the Warby Parker ones, it's like embedded in the actual lens. I believe with blue light filters, they make everything a little bit yellow tinted but I can't really see a yellow. It's not very distinct with the Warby Parker one. So I'm not sure if they forgot to put it in or if it's supposed to be like this. If you own a pair, please let me know in the comments because I don't know if I got gypped or not. But this is what they look like on. They're super lightweight. They don't give me any headaches or anything. I really like this pair. So I'm hoping that they didn't mess up and it's somewhere in there and I kind of just want to keep this one it looks good but okay remember what this face looks like which is from iconic comes with a case nothing super cute just very standard and I forget 
what this one's called, but it is from the brand Otis and Gray. It's like a burgundy red frame, also round and thin. You can kind of see from the reflection of the lens. It's definitely blue light filtering and it definitely makes things a little bit more yellow tinted. But this is what these look like on. What do you think? Does one look better than the other? These Otis and Grey ones are for sure heavier and I feel like the nose piece, it like puts a little more pressure on my nose, which is more noticeable. The Warby Parker ones are so light, I feel like sometimes I forget that it's even there, which I think makes it a better experience overall. And I do see a difference. I do think things are clearer with them on, but I'm trying to not wear them all the time only when I am like editing or looking at the screen for a while, but doing day-to-day -day activities, I'm, I'm not gonna wear them. Yesterday, I also was able to finish making washi samples of all of the washi tapes that I'm going to bring with me to New York. So it was nice that I organized the drawers first so that when I made the washi samples, they're all kind of sorted by color. I have a lot of blue ones. Blue is, I guess, my favorite. <gasps> Anyways, yeah, here, here are the washi samples. <laughs> a little bit out of order now that I dropped them all. I have some wonton in a million, which I have two cards of wonton in a million, and a card of paper kumiko, who I'm actually getting dinner with in about three hours. <laughs> So that's cool. And Coffee Monsters Co., Sticky Rice Co., and Lovely Mime. And Happy Dye is on here as well. I wouldn't know, I don't think I would normally recommend someone store their washi tape like this because you're gonna like have a crease at every like one and a half inches, which is I think gonna be annoying. And also, I think it's easier just to like use the roll as it was created. I don't know. So that's done. Now I can move these washi drawers back downstairs and I need to clean that up because I really want to do a very quick tour of the shop studio so I can have it for my own personal memory before it is taken apart. So what that all I did yesterday? I'm going to start packing some of the nightstand items into boxes. We're gonna transport both of our nightstands to my sister and Chris's tonight before dinner. I'm also gonna like give her some of my wedding guest dresses too so she can hang them nicely and I guess she can wear them too, I guess. Our room is going to be a little bit more empty so I wanna take a picture of Brian and I have a little photo shoot on the bed. Nothing like, nothing sketchy, just like, I don't know, cute like, oh, this is home picture, you know?
today's Thursday. It's about like 6 p.m. and we're about to go meet up with our friends Ivan and Jennifer and see their <laughs> new place for the first time. I like laugh because it's not, they've been living there for a few years now, <laughs> but you know, pandemic. So we haven't seen it yet and excited to go see their dog Taro. More doggy footage, hope you don't mind it. And then we're all gonna get dinner. We're going to eat some Korean food at a restaurant called Daeho. Super duper hyped in the Bay and surprisingly I haven't tried it yet. So I'm very, very excited. I don't think there's any other moving updates except yesterday we did drop off our nightstands. <laughs> and right now there's just boxes where they used to be. And Brian was taking apart his standing desk. He may drop that off at Santa Cruz's tonight. And I have to have to organize. of therapy with my therapist which is bittersweet and I feel like I don't think I fully processed it yet so since I am moving to another state I can't have her as my therapist anymore she needs to be in the same state as I reside in for safety purposes but she was also about to leave the network that I'm in, so it made sense for us to end a little bit early. But it's very, very, very bittersweet. Um, I tried to write notes, but I didn't really write that many notes. What did I write? Therapy is great. I think um, it's been really nice hearing a lot of like success stories with therapy from a lot of people around me and in social media in the past like couple of years I feel like it's gotten very very talked about <laughs> in a good way so yeah I've been in therapy for about a year now nearly a year like 11 months uh, so I started last year in 2021 May 2021 I think so yeah it has been a year rewind a lot Probably in 2018 is when I realized I should probably look into starting therapy. I think it was also because at the time I was working as a nurse, because I had heard more about it from my peers, it seemed like a very logical step to do for me. So then, uh, yeah, 2018 I should have started, but it was always a thing. Just like the dentist and a lot of other checkups, I just kept pushing it in the back and never really doing it until 2020 hit. Try out therapy and there was not a lot of therapists available in this particular 
company that I was enrolled in and so I had filled everything out. I even had a like intro consulting call in August of 2020 and I was placed on a wait list until May 2021. My therapist has then uh, informed me that it is no longer like that so thank goodness there are many more therapists within that company and so even when I moved to New York they have New York offices and then they can rematch me to a therapist over there which I'm relieved about because that waiting was not fun at all and I know that sometimes you don't really get along with the first match you make with your therapist but I was very fortunate that she and I just clicked. I think at first I felt very weary and it takes a lot for me and I'm sure anybody to just like open up about a tough topic but man it was a journey. Last year has been filled with so much personal growth it's really wild to be honest I feel like I'm an entirely different person. Okay maybe not that's a little dramatic maybe not an entirely different person but like brought out the things that I already held within myself and just brought it to more surface <laughs> but yeah it's it was a really really good experience and I am planning on continuing in New York I just have to be rematched and then when we come back to California I'm hoping that I can go back to this therapist because I just really like her way of talking. It's a lot of validation. And it just sounds like I'm talking with a friend. It's very nice casual conversation. I don't think she practices old school therapy where they don't say much maybe. I don't really know all the schools of that like therapy. So um, pardon me if I am misinformed. Please don't quote me for your research paper, but I don't know. It just seemed like a really nice casual conversation and comments that she made I feel like were what I was thinking anyways or in a tone that I could easily receive it and then learn from it if that makes sense. I'm very sensitive to like a person's tone when they talk and depending on that tone kind of dictates the comfort level that I talk to them or just like comfort levels in general and so we were always aligned I feel like. Maybe a, maybe there are definitely parts in the beginning where we're just like a little bit more uncomfortable and she helps me realize a lot of um, trauma in my lifetime that I don't think I considered to be trauma before but like once we got to talking and then once we got to talking about how I'm feeling in that week or how I'm reacting to a situation and linking it back to the trauma I had in my childhood then it made sense to me and because it made sense to me I like I feel like my mind just kind of was a little detangled and I don't I, I maybe I could have done that without her but it definitely quickened the process and it just sounded it was just a really good experience and I'm very fortunate that I was matched to her my very first time trying therapy Anyways, that is my little long- oh my god, that was nine minutes? I spent nine minutes talking about therapy. No wonder my vlogs are so long. I feel like a lot of my anxiousness has- it's still there, but the longevity of it and the severity of it I think has definitely decreased. Yeah, therapy has also helped, I think, in our communication as a couple and a relationship. It helped me with communication with my friends. So yeah, I just love it. I hope that that helps someone get started on it because I feel like that's what I needed to get started on it was to hear from others that they were doing it. As you can see, we moved the large dresser out of the room. Brian took it to Sandra and Chris's and it's over there now. And I put all my washi drawers down there just to give myself some space. I will show the horrendous mess that is my desk and the floor it, maybe later tonight. Brian also moved his standing desk out of the room and he's gonna move that to their place today too. So I literally have taken up all the floor space which should give me the space to organize all my stationery. I'm going downstairs, 
clean up a bit and then I'll show the little tour. I feel like once upon a time I would have been embarrassed. Actually, I take that back. A couple days ago, I felt embarrassed looking at this pile. But these are all the contents that were in that dresser. In addition to an Alex 9 drawer from Ikea, everything is here now. Everything is laid out for me to organize. So I'm not embarrassed. I was a couple days ago, but now not so much. Everything will get organized. It will. It will. Uh, Brian's desk used to be right here, if you can imagine that. Saturday, we're gonna try multitasking. I'll give you an update on where we are with the move and everything, and then I'm also going to be baking a black sesame mochi cake. The recipe is from Bon Appetit, and I tried it once before, like two years ago, and I really liked it. Um, but I'm going to a friend's for dinner, so I wanted to bring dessert, of course. I haven't actually caught up on Bon Appetit. Have they? Do they start paying their writers? Not sure. The, the recipe itself is good though. Uh, I, I wouldn't, I don't know, I don't know. To toast these black sesame seeds. The back says they're already roasted, but I'm just gonna toast them on the stove top for a little bit. And I have, I have some notes, so hopefully I can actually multitask because I feel like it's very difficult to bake and talk. In the pan and I'm supposed to wait for the seeds to start making crackling noises and that's when I know it's done and then I put it into my food processor. I have a small one. Um, I hope this all fits in there. <laughs> but while this is toasting, what is the update? What is the update? Today my housemate's co-worker is going to pick up our dining table so we no longer have a dining table. I did record a little bit of that so we can remember what the setup was like. Tomorrow someone is taking the TV and also the TV console. <laughs> Sorry Brian, it's just like... There. Creepy, gosh, okay. Oh, uh, we'll see. Oh, so yeah, tomorrow someone's taking... No, it's Brian. <laughs> he's being, he's doing it on purpose. You're welcome. Uh, um, yeah, so tomorrow's I'm picking up the TV and the TV stand. We are doing another trip down to Standard Chris's to drop off more things. Things from my shop studio, which I was able to record a little bit of it, but it was such a mess. And I was, the stress level, honestly, I should put like a stress level meter right here. It's like a three out of five because again, it's like that initial shock of like when you put everything in a box and then now I have to take everything out of that box to like kind of see what I can recycle or give away or bring. That initial shock is it's overwhelming. So stress levels are probably uh, a three out of five. I think it'll sl slow down, especially after this weekend because it's tax tax season. So once I submit those, I think I'll feel a little bit a little bit better. But still, a lot to go through. What else do I have? Uh, so yeah, we're bringing some of the shop things down to Santa Cruz's. I have two Alex drawers. Those I've emptied already, and so they just need to be loaded into the car. I packed up all of the silhouette portraits already, so that's that's done. I don't think I'm gonna bring any of those to New York. Next big thing in the shop is the printer and of course all the inventory, so that is another thing to worry about later on. But yeah, lots of moving furniture. Oh, and then the last two big pieces of furniture from our room our bed frame, which my sister is taking, and also my standing desk, which they are also taking. So 
slash we are forcing them to take for us. <laughs> Thanks, Sandra and Chris. We also have to take apart the floating wooden shelves in our room too, and all of the gallery frames. So I don't know if we'll do that today or not, but at around 4.30, we're leaving here. I'm gonna go to my friend's place. He's making homemade tonkatsu from scratch. He said it took him four days, so these seeds are still toasting like if I've ever, so. I don't know. I think those are all the updates anyways. Cue the baking sequence. <laughs> Summer rain on the window Watch the time float on Cool air blows a memento As I fall right now you're probably at an angle my stress level has increased to like a 3.5 but the mochi cake is in the oven I was thinking about the ingredients it's pretty much in Hawaiian butter mochi but I was supposed to have like this crust around the edges but my butter was not melted enough or I don't think I put a like a thick enough layer so none of it stuck to the sides but I give no I give no shits so now I'm in the room and I feel like there's like 5,000 things and I don't know what I don't know what to do I don't know what to do I have Sandra's check-in luggage here she let us borrow it and I have this tub that the camera's sitting on with all the t-shirts that were in the dresser that I emptied and out the ones that I think I want to bring to New York. So for now, I'm just going to place them in. And this is how I fold it. Marie Kondo style, kind of, except the last step. I like showing the print at the very top. And then that means that this tub that you're sitting on will be emptier. And therefore I can use it to store, I think the next big thing are like maybe stationary items that I would like to bring to New York. I have a lot of white t-shirts and black t-shirts with colorful prints on them. A little pink. These are the ones that I'm gonna bring. As you can tell, I wear a lot of t-shirts. So next, all of my jeans will go in here and leggings. And I think those are the basics. And then I have to go through the closet. Well, not even, maybe I'm halfway through. I want to say there's method to my madness, but there isn't. So I think I just realized maybe like 10 minutes ago that I'm the kind of person who cannot stay on task. I tend to start things and then get overwhelmed with that task. So then I move on to another task that I know needs to get done. And then I just kind of keep switching between everything until eventually everything gets done. And I'm not saying that is the way to do it. That is not, I don't think it is the most efficient but that's just how it is feeling right now, and so I am going to do that. I have a lot of these mailers that I used for orders for the shop left over, and so I'm going to use these to at least package some of my makeup. Some I think I'm actually going to ship to New York. Things that are in, I think, this box. Uh, things that I don't think can really break, like foundation, lip gloss, mascara, liquid eyeliner, so I think I can ship those and 
These are all things that I have bought and stocked up on during some sort of sale. I always buy makeup on sale. And uh, so I'm gonna keep them in their packaging to like kind of better protect them. And then the things that I'm going to take in my carry-on are like my eyeshadow palettes because these will break if they are in a check-in. This one actually broke, that green shade, but I don't even want them to break. So I think just placing them in a bubble mailer will help secure it. And I also have, where'd they go? I have these rainbow label stickers from ages ago from Target. And I'm going to try to like stick one on each thing since I want to be able to see what's inside the package, I think. And I don't think if I, I mean, if I mail it, no one's gonna care if it's like eyeliners and stuff. Hi everyone, it's the end of the week. We have a trash can here and all of our art and pictures are gone from the wall. The shelves are gone too, the bed is gone for now. The mattress is just leaning against there and we're just gonna be sleeping on a mattress for the rest of our time here. And uh, I have my monitor still, so I just am watching Mel on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's a total mess everywhere and that's my reality. I just have to go through everything. Um, oh, I did find this gem. I know, sorry, it's very gross looking. Something clearly spilled on it. But it's my mom's recipe for bun ryu, which is like a Vietnamese tomato based seafood noodle soup. And it's semi homemade. There's a lot of canned items on here, but to me that it feels very homey. So I'm really glad that I found this because I totally forgot how to make it by memory. And I wrote this like maybe a, more than a decade ago, I think. And so it, it has stood the test of time. There is still a one recipe that I'm trying to find and it is for her butter mochi, which at the time I didn't even know was butter mochi. It was something else. She called it like, a, she called it a Vietnamese coconut cake, but um, I think it's because it had the same texture that reminded her of like cassava cake. Uh, but I want to find that. But small win here going through my things. So there I have a scrapbooking supply pile, uh, phone case pile. I found a box of all the holiday cards I've brought in and also some cute handwritten notes and birthday cards. I have more downstairs, so I'll fill this up with that. These stickers need to be sorted into the sticker binder that I'm going to bring to New York somehow. Most of it's character stickers. Then I have a pile of journaling stickers. These go here too. Journaling stickers. These are empty cards. Notepad pile. Decal stickers. Over there is my pile of 
notebooks from previous years, 